everybody, this is your Trev, and let's get started on some more. Let's play 999. Alright. Basically, all we have to do is we have to take this wheel and put it in some directions. So we have to go south. So we go south. West. Southwest. Northwest. East. And then. What the? The handle can't. A handle came off. <laughs> stooping, stooping so low of you, you're already here. Okay, so we have a handle. So I wrote down all the things from the the charts, and then let's see if this works now. Yeah, it fits. Excellent. That should allow us to operate the engine or the telegraph. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just that face made me want to say it like that. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so now we have to put in a combination. And let me just close this. Okay, the next combination. Oh. Okay, it's full. chart room. Yeah, this is stuff on it now. There's something on the wall. It looks like kind of a rival board. There's only stuff displayed on the left side. What the hell is this? The names of the port. Those the names of the port of the world. I imagine they're showing up as a ship route. It's more likely you'd see this in an airport. Departing at X carrier, X X flight, X X at X X zero zero. Like that. Oh, I get it. So it's like Luna there's the ports along the ship routes. But there's only only line show arrival times. And the times at the top and the bottom. Forty-five oh. Perhaps that's an arrival time? I don't know. Let's try the watch. Let's see if this works. No, I'm supposed to put the mark up. Oh, we don't even have it selected. Mark what? Trust me. It should be fine now. Well, thanks for giving me the pocket watch back, but you don't need to look so smug about it. I took a look. I took a look at the noodles then. 45 seconds, 50 seconds, past 7 o'clock. Oh, you changed it to match the final arrival time. I slowly mind. You know what to do next, right? Give it a shot. Pocket watch now with an actual time on it that we can see. Oh, I actually like that how they put that kind of detail into the 3D model. Alright, put it in. Looks like there's some sort of lock. It's a weird shaped indentation on it. Actually, yeah. 
o'clock and watch my Huh? That's strange. Nothing happened. Where else we set the wrong time? We are going on a time flying destination. This is a handsome that time, so are you saying that they are out of the blue house at the right time? Yeah, I think it's right. We need to figure out that one. There's a button we can do to talk to people. Not only really much else we can do, okay. Alright, I've got the models of Trevor in episode 10, I don't know if you can really spend any more time on this map. It's written right there. Did you put the speed shown on the chart? Okay, well, if that's the thing, so it's full. Just a half derp. Huh? That's weird. I thought I'd put it in the right speed. Did I mess up? No, I don't think so. Same thing happened earlier, remember? Who's gonna change the gravel board? Oh yeah, you're right. Let's check it out. Okay, so I screwed up. <laughs> 
to give me an idea. Yeah, no one. Did you break the pen? Look, this play panel looks different. Hey, you're right. On the left, the half of the sound. The last line is also in the rest of time. It's 10 seconds past 0 o'clock. Oh, that. And you mean. Sick. Good work, Chippe. You're sharp. We said it's time to pass the clock. Surely we'll know what happens next. Let's give it a shot, shall we? Now we have one that says 10 seconds past 3 o'clock. Okay, so I screwed up. Actually, it's shaped just like the Pokemon watch right now. Let's try putting it in there. Yes! Yes! It says open now. Good work! It seems you were successful. Well done, Junpei. Hey, Clover. What? Look, we unlocked the door. We can go through the room. Out of this room. Oh, well, let's go then. Clover. Alright. No, it didn't get the launch. <laughs> The space they found themselves in was outside the wheelhouse, far and narrow to be called a hallway. On the left was a wooden door, Jibbe pushed it open and stepped into the room beyond. The room. It was full of all manners of turn of the century's electronic equipment. The most of most of them were things they'd never seen before. They had no idea what might have been for, let alone to operate them. One of the solar machines had a metal bar. Ace seemed to recognize it. Ah yes, a telegraph key. Those were used to transmit Morse code a long time ago. He slowly... He turned and slowly took foot in the room. This must be the communications office. Across the room from the door they entered through and was another door. Metal plaque was nailed to it. It read, Captain's Quarters. The Captain's Quarters. That's what it says. Then do you think... I am Zero, the captain of this ship. A swallowed. Junpei could... could feel his hands begin to sweat. Only Clover seemed unaffected. We won't know if we don't open it. She walked to the door and put her hand on the arm. I'm scared. It opened easily enough and paused and walked in. Jim Payne and I used to follow. First thing they saw. Oh my god. Was a man on the floor covered in blood. And Jim Payne felt his body seize up, his mouth went dry. And he felt very, very cold. The blood on his veins slowly crawled and his heart tightened it like a fist. This was the third time he'd seen a horror of death laid before him. He didn't think it was something he could stand much see much more of. <sighs> Still he began to accept that whenever he saw whatever whatever he saw, whatever happened to him beyond his control or force control. Driven by a determination that he could Hope to match. A sense of help, helplessness and desperation washed over him. He left behind a feeling of utter emptiness that wormed its way through his body for gasping. Then he realized that he had yet to check the man's pulse. Perhaps he was still alive. Filled by a spark of hope, Jupiter ran to the man's body. His heart fell. His fingers on the man's neck felt no pulse. The pupils dilated and he wasn't breathing. He was with the man's already stiff body. There was a deep red wound in his chest. He did <laughs> I'd have to wonder what could have been such a wound. Lying next to the corpse was an axe, his entire blade drenched in bright red blood. Oh! 
Oh, that looks terrifying. From the shape of the man's wound, there could be no doubt that it was made by the axe. Jimmy looked at the body again. A leg of blood stretched across it, or stretched around it. We were wearing clothes of the ship's captain. They were stained in blood. The captain, did that mean the man, this man was zero? His left arm was a bracelet. I never what bracelet was. Ah! Uh, ah! Ah! Oh my god! 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 That is scary! That is really scary! Uh, I am holding my cat. Or at least, it's a little... It's zero? It's not only... And you may notice the st stench of blood from the room. <laughs> you may not but laugh. There was nothing else for him to say. This is something that was too straightforward. If it hadn't been a dead man before, you may not have thought it was a joke. Okay, let's find a way out of this thing quick. <sighs> uh, okay, well, first things first. What the hell? A camcorder. It looks like it's pointed at the door. Wait! Wait, 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 wait. If Zero's one of the people, then that means- Oh my god. Well, the power's on. Why don't someone want to videotape the door? I think it's a kind of for a hard drive. It doesn't look like it's been recording or anything. What do you mean? It's just sending whatever it sees to something. What does it see? The door. Now the door is a keypad. There's a little rectangular hole. I think it's a key of some sort. With the right key, I should be able to unlock it. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, for a second there, I thought I saw a whole bunch of different numbers. Bloodstained chair. There's blood on the chair. Do you think it was the red guy? Yeah, probably. So, if the captain of the ship was Zero, does that mean Zero's dead? Hi, Katie. Uh, music box. I know what these things are. This was an instant box. One of those old music boxes. How about we wind it up? Why does it sound like that? It's broken. The pins on the cylinder are all shaped weird. I don't like those pins. They look like someone put what else on top of it. Then we're gonna have to take it apart and figure it out. I like the music, it's cool. A lamp! Which is internal. I don't think there's anything special about it. A small table. Alright. The bed. A bed. There's nothing in it. Alright, thank you. Let's see if Oh, what's the deal with this? It's some kind of code. There's four words and numbers with. They all start with zero and end with eight. F and R V respectively. Maybe it's the number of days. New material has been added to the file screen. Whoa, 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 whoa. The screen showing what happened at the central staircase in deck B. The screen showing what's going on in the small room that I don't recognize. Looks like really fancy. And there's just some little hallway. The screen that shows a big hospital room. Here's the show the central staircase on the C deck. I don't recognize this room once. There's a bunch of weird buttons on here, and they're probably switches to the screen. Do you know how to work this thing? Um, I don't just press one of these. Like this one. Well, I guess it doesn't change the. What the hell is this? Chibi <laughs> snorted with a grim humor 
The second time he'd come into this room. The four screens at the bottom had letters, each spelling Z-R-O. Z-R-O. Jimbo felt like he was being mocked. The real villain was somewhere laughing at him. What do you think? He turned to Clover, who was standing next to him. Her voice was almost too low to hear. Nothing. It seemed that she cared not a little. Of course, Jimbo could hardly blame her. From the strains, she was surely under... She paid that was so She didn't respond to it. Still, he had to ask. He gestured towards the corpse. What about him? Do you think he's really zero? Clover shook her head weakly. There's no way it's him. Didn't I tell you already? Zero's one of us. Yeah, right. Well, even if it wasn't him, even if he wasn't one of us, there was no way that man could be zero. Don't you get it? The letters that spelled zero on the TV screen, the captain's clothes, he's got on. And of course the bracelet with the zero on it. It's all too obvious. Look, look, the zero, the zero right here. This is zero's dead body. This doesn't seem kind of funny to you. You're right. I mean, an idiot could see something through like that. That's not the point. I'm not trying to make fun of them. Thinking that, thinking a trick like this would work. I'm not sure if they didn't think it would work. Which makes me wonder, why did they do it? I think this is the challenge. The challenge from the person who is really behind, who is really behind this all. He's making fun of us. Don't you get it? Whoever killed this guy really wants us to think of course with zero. Then he'd have to put then he'd never have to put the bracelet on. Walking about, walking about with Zero's bracelet would be hanging the sign around his neck and saying, I did it. No one wants the brain to be able to see the guy is supposed to look like and what thing Zero is supposed to be. Just like we did. The killer must know he. The killer must know why he wouldn't want us to think he's Zero and put a bracelet on him anyway. said he's mocking us. Too bad, suckers. This isn't zero. It's the same bad joke a lot of criminals like to play. They just sit back and watch people run in circles. Oh, look, here I am. What's the wrong, guys? Come and catch me if you can. That's really twisted. But someone seems kind of childish. Yeah, you're right. It's really childish. Like just a game to whoever this person is. That's what seems funny to me. Jimmy bent down to look so Alright, let's get back to that point. Who killed this man? I don't know. And what's this guy's deal? Who is he? How do I know that? If I know anything, I would Check and see if he's got anything on him that might tell us who he is. Give me a hand here, Clover. What? We've got to flip him over. How else are we going to search his pockets? Clover didn't move. Chippe had no choice but to move the body on his own. He grabbed hold of an area not completely covered in blood and was shot. It took a moment, but eventually Chippe felt the man bulk begin to shift. But just as it did, something fell. The bracelet. The bracelet with zero its face. Ah, so you'll ask us how to remove the bracelets. There are two ways to do so. One, you escape from the ship. Two, heart rate reaches zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the confines of the ship, or, def or detects the wearer's heartbeat has fallen to zero, it'll shut down automatically. Jinpei stared at the bracelet. This man, he's dead, isn't he? No, it's just that I guess I didn't really think about it until now. 
if his bracelet's off, then that means he's dead. That's pretty obvious if he's dead. He doesn't really need to look at his bracelet to figure that out. He's dead. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's pretty obvious. It would look a lot better if it would look all better than the other bodies we've seen. So, you know, I mean, if there wasn't it, if it wasn't all blood, he'd almost look like he's still alive. Up and even say it, but he's kind of, kind of is a dog, you know. Dying from the bomb going off inside him, and it's just. So the snake's bones went right through his skin. The explosion must have made him throw this away or something. <laughs> Some broken, those broken bones just sticking out of his left arm. Suddenly, Jupiter realized what he was saying. How could he have been so cruel? He's slapping it. Clapping his hands over his mouth. But it was already too late. He turned and looked at Clover. She was glaring at him furiously. Why? Did, what did you just say? Her words sounded cold. He knew an apology could hardly atone for what he... He'd tried anyway. Oh man. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I don't really know what I was thinking. I mean... No. That's not what I'm talking about. What did you say about his arm? Arm? Yes, his left arm. You said, you said it, didn't you? Well, I did, but... I mean, I didn't... Didn't you see it, too? Of course not! I could barely look at him! Clover took a quick, deep breath. Are you sure it was his left arm? Jupe looked... Jupe thought back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. And he had a broken bone, right? What the hell are you getting at here? Just shut up and answer me. She shoved her face closer to his. You could see the fire in her eyes. Junpei winced and swallowed. Yeah, he did. It was pretty bad too. The bone was sticking right out of his arm. No sooner were the words out of Clover's mouth than expected to change. She was suddenly, suddenly she cried. Junpei wasn't sure what to do. Thank you. It was close to the last thing he'd expected to hear. Jupe had no idea what had just happened. He didn't think any. He didn't think anything worth it. Worth it. <laughs> thanks, and he. Anything worth the thanks. He couldn't understand why she would have chosen the moment to be in crying. So he simply stood there, confused. Thank you, Jupe. She thanked him again, and then saying something strange. Something strange even happened. Clover threw herself into Chunfei's arms, into Chunfei's surprise arms. <laughs> hey, what's going on with you? I'm sorry, it's just I'm so happy. Why? The body in the shower room. It, it isn't his. It isn't my brother's. Huh? It's not Snake. What? Why on earth would you think that? Because his left arm. She, she stopped herself. I'm sorry. I really shouldn't be talking about it. Jupe decided it wouldn't be pertinent not to press him for any more information. If she didn't wish to tell him, she certainly had no reason to hurt him, so. Perhaps more important, if Clover was so certain that she was likely right, that <laughs> the, the body the body and shower were and snakes. It wasn't much, but the knowledge lifted some sort of weight from Jupe's heart. He's alive! I'm so happy. Tears shone in her eyes. Those tears melted Chupe's heart. As she cried, she had to push herself up against his chest like a child. Chupe put his arms around her and held her tight. Chupe, I remember you. No matter what happens, you never lose hope. You always have to remember the most important thing you must faith is to have love. You remember all the ways when you bring you good luck. I reached into her pocket and pulled out something. It was the laminated bookmark of the four-leaf clover. I only made it here because you gave this to me. It was suspicious. I was suspicious of everyone. I thought angry and miserable. It's because I had a four-leaf clover. Because of what you said to me, I... Chupai hadn't thought of 
his words would have such an effect on her. Her words make her feel a little awkward. Thank you so much, James. She looked up at him. He, scr he scratched his head. His nose pretending to not notice something interesting somewhere else in the room. She really wants to thank someone. Should we thank him, Santa? Santa? What? Well, he was going to take me to have And the words for each leaf, I got them from him, too. And suddenly... Clover broke away from Junpei. Huh? He looked confused. He hadn't thought that she would react to that poorly. Clover began to pace around the room. Six steps to the left, six steps to the right. And another six to the left, and then she stopped. Did, did Santa really tell you those things? Her eyes were serious, but not angry. Yeah, he did. Did I, uh, say something wrong? No, no, not at all. In fact, this could be really good news. And we'll find out that good news next time on Let's Play 999. Thank God there's something happy in this. I was actually starting to think that probably the more happier thing about this game is probably slaughtering something. I felt like I'd probably have to play Gears of War and run rampaging through a whole bunch of locuses just to cheer me up. But thank God this game actually got something happy into my favorite character right now. Alright. I'll see you next time.